video explains how this tactical flow meter works, and it comes from technology many moons ago, 89. It's in prior art, and everybody can use it. Essentially, it's a sensor in parallel with a laminar flow element, and the sensor operates on the first law of thermodynamics. And this patent, I'm just copying drawings out of a patent. This shows the, a little more detail in the sensor. Essentially, the flow goes through, some of the flow goes through the sensor, and more of the flow goes through the laminar flow element. The split between the sensor must be a long, thin tube such that the flow within the tube is laminar and the flow within these elements are laminar. This is a laminar flow element that's adjustable by cutting out a covering over the front of the laminar flow element, which is tapered like a cork. It fits in this. This product became Sierra's Model 820. This is a electrical representation of the sensor where there's a winding across a hypodermic needle, center tapped, and we measure the resist. We create a constant current through this sensor, if you will. So let's look at it. And we're measuring T2 minus T1. So I squared R is energy, heating energy, Q. And this is T2 minus T1. Here is we're then summing the flow of the flow in the large one and the little tiny flow measured in the big one. So we have again here another representation. Here's the constant heat. And here we have heat or Q equals M dot C sub P T2 minus T1 plus H0. Some original heat that's sitting in there. And again, what happens as the flow goes through, it carries the heat from from where where this entire system is heated up because it's a center tap method you could do individual with three but this center tap method it's going to shift the curve and we're measuring this temperature difference and we're maintaining in the the linear range and there are improvements this this sensor here it's important that it not lose energy to the outside environment so this imagine this is a thin hypodermic needle that about a 31,000th ID, 031, it's very small. So here's an improvement where the sensor is encased uh, in a vacuum so that there's no energy loss. So the losses are only end losses having to do with metal. So this is an improvement. And a further improvement is the improvement we have with this device, which I'll show further on. This is the one inch flow body and the other flow bodies are similar to it. This is injection molded. This is the inlet section. There's a screen that goes on the inlet. The flow encounters a laminar flow element, which is a long, has many times longer than the the widths, the characteristics are mentioned such that the flow within there will be laminar. And then the flow is picked up from the sensor using these tabs. Inside, I'm not showing the sensor, but inside is the sensor that use, utilizes first principles, Q equals M dot C sub P delta T. I'm going to show you the inside of this by making a cross section. Now we'll cut through the flow meter and we'll see the inside, how it works. That's the laminar flow element we're cutting through right now. And we're getting into the sensor. And the sensor is communicated through these, through this uh, plumbing through here. It goes up through a sensor, comes back down, comes back through and back out. So the sensor is picking off in parallel with this laminar flow element. And there can be a number of sizes of laminar flow elements and even adjustable laminar flow elements. And so that's what the rest of the inside of the flow meter looks like. You can see where the sensor connects in there. It's a hold down piece for it. And, and then it's properly marked for patent pending. There are a number of patents pending for this technology as it improves over technologies I've made when I was at Sierra.